I think the visual inspection needs to go away. Like we need to stop talking about visual inspections. Now, I don't think we need to stop visually inspecting devices. I just think the term visual inspection isn't appropriate. Let's talk about it. So I believe there is a serious terminology issue in biomedical service manuals and in how BMETs talk to each other. I think it's time we finally drop the word visual from our BMET vocabulary. And here's why. I almost never see the visual inspection actually just be a visual inspection. Let's take a look at an example. So how can I check that all modules go in smoothly and lock up properly just using my eyes? Or can I really properly inspect fasteners and check the tilt range and inspect the mounting plate just using my eyes? Now I know we have a lot of misnomers in English. Jellyfish aren't fish. We drive in parkways, and we park in driveways. But, look, while we can tolerate some level of common misnomers, I think technicians and engineers need to be particularly careful with our words and how we name things. You see, the inspection is meant to be the initial gathering of information, and it can be a lot like detective work. And just as a detective looks for clues to solve a crime, you're looking for clues to keep equipment working correctly and make sure the patient is safe. And the clues you gather include sight, smell, touch, auditory. Probably not taste, but let me know in the comments if you know of an inspection that includes that sense. You know, so from things such as gas leaks or the smell of burnt components, checking the tactile feeling of buttons and knobs, and listening for issues in pumps or even bed motors. All of these things can be clues to issues that are occurring in your device. The visual inspection probably comes from some of the quality control language you find in a lot of manufacturing environments, and that is a part of an inspection. But you see, preventative maintenance and doing things that biomeds do is so much more than just visually inspecting something. They're using all of their senses to find clues that can give them indicators of ways that this device may not be working or functioning properly. Almost always the first thing done when receiving a new medical device or as part of a preventative maintenance routine includes using your eyes to inspect the device for issues, such as checking the housing for damage or looking for fluid contamination, looking for obviously broken parts. Of course, what's included in the visual inspection varies by medical device, and some manufacturers will provide specific guidelines. Now, different service manuals provide different levels of detail for the inspection. You see Bovi Aaron's 2250 on the top provides very little, just says look for signs of damages, whereas GE Carescape's visual inspection includes a variety of bullet points, some of which include you to check things are locked properly, modules are connected, and things are pivoting properly. Now in most manuals you'll see that the visual inspection, or as I'd like to call it, inspection, precedes the electrical safety tests, and that's because the majority of issues that you find with metal equipment can be discovered in a proper inspection. In fact, I've seen data that suggest about 95% of the issues that are found for failed medical equipment can be discovered through a proper inspection. A proper inspection looks for all sorts of issues, including damage to the device screens and components. Particular attention can be paid to see if there's been any damage due to cleaning agents and other types of fluids checking probes and transducers for breaks or leaks or fluids, such as this ultrasound probe, which has clearly seen better days. You also want to check all your cables and connections, particularly your connections to the power supply. Here you see a common issue that occurs with the Space Labs power connection. Another thing you want to check on medical devices are, is there any fans? And if so, are they clean? Here you can see a, a lot of dust buildup on this fan, and as that happens, that fan's gonna run hotter, and as that occurs, there's a potential for fire or for the fan to fail, for all kinds of issues to happen. Sometimes a quick vacuum of the fan can save hundreds of dollars in cost of repairs. Another thing you wanna check are the terminals. Is there corrosion? Do you see any issues? Are there bent pins that are occurring? Here's an Alaris uh, 8100 module, pump module, 
and it's very common for corrosion to build up on these terminals, which can cause communication issues between the module and the PC unit. Another thing you need to check during inspection is make sure all hoses are working properly. Make sure that there's no uh, damage, physical damage to the hoses of things such as non-invasive blood pressure, anesthesia, ventilators, patient circuits. One thing to keep in mind is just because a device appears to be working doesn't mean that everything's okay. Here you see a SpO2 monitor, but there's clearly a visible uh, failure about to occur. Another important thing to check is are the stickers uh, that are placed on that device up to date? Are they appropriate? Are they still in use? Are the codes and phone numbers that are on there still uh, applicable? Now the question may come up, how often do I do an inspection? Well, ultimately it's up to your health organization and that'll depend on state and national certifications that they're trying to maintain. You know, they're gonna look at things such as the manufacturing guidelines, historical data, and the risk of the equipment. Typically, higher risk devices are gonna be inspected more often and lower risk devices less frequently. Okay, so let me know what you think. Is this something that we should drop? Should we drop the visual from visual inspection? Should we just call it an inspection, an initial inspection, a preventative inspection? What's the language that you use at your healthcare facility? What have tips and tools have you found helpful as you're inspecting devices have you noticed anything that is particularly useful that you could share?